At the end of 1970s, psychologist Dr. Geert Hofstede published his Cultural Dimensions Model. Since then, it's become an internationally recognized standard for understanding cultural differences. He identified six dimensions that could distinguish one culture from another. The first one is the Power Distance Index, it measures the extent to which the less powerful members accept and expect that power is distributed unequally. Malaysia has the highest score, team members will not initiate any action, they like to be guided and directed to complete a task. Austria has the lowest score, supervisors and employees are considered almost as equals. Individualism versus collectivism is the second dimension. It represents the degree to which individuals are integrated into groups. Guatemala, the country with the lowest IDV score, has a collectivist culture, people are integrated into strong in groups which continue protecting them in exchange for unquestioning loyalty. On the other side, the United States have the highest score. The individualism is perfectly represented by the American dream, which is the hope for a better quality of life and a higher standard of living than their parents. The masculinity versus femininity dimension refers to the distribution of roles between the genders. The study revealed that women's values differ less among societies than men's values. Men's values can be very assertive and competitive, maximally different from women's value, or modest and caring, similar to women's values. Japan has the highest score. If you open an office in Japan, you should recognize you're operating in a hierarchical, deferential and traditionally patriarchal society. Long hours are the norm, and this, in turn, can make it harder for female team members to gain advancement, due to family commitments. At the same time, Japan is a culture where all children learn the value of competition and winning as part of a team from a young age. Therefore, female team members are just as likely to display these notionally masculine traits as their male colleagues. By comparison, Sweden, the country with the lowest score, is a very feminine society. People focus on managing through discussion, consensus, compromise, and negotiation. The Uncertainty Avoidance Index describes how well people can cope with anxiety. Greece is the country with the highest score. During a meeting, you might be keen to generate discussion, because you recognize that there is a cultural tendency for team members to make the safest, most conservative decisions, despite any emotional outbursts. At the other end of the spectrum, Singapore has the lowest score, the country is more open to change or innovation, more inclined to open-ended decision-making and has less sense of urgency. Long-term versus short-term dimension refers to the degree to which people need to explain the inexplicable, and is strongly related to religiosity and nationalism. China, the country with the highest score, has a long-term orientation, which means that the culture is pragmatic, modest and more and more thrifty. Sierra Leone is the country with the lowest score, people tend to be religious and nationalistic. Self-enhancement is also important here, along with a person's desire to please their parents. The last dimension is indulgence versus restraint. Countries with a high score such as Brazil allow or encourage relatively free gratification of people's own drives and emotions, such as enjoying life and having fun. In a society with a low score like Russia there is more emphasis on suppressing gratification and more regulation of people's conduct and behavior, and there are stricter social norms. In conclusion by using Hofstede's cultural dimensions as a starting point, you can make the unknown less intimidating, avoid making mistakes, and provide a much needed confidence boost when you're working in an unfamiliar country. Above all, make cultural sensitivity a daily part of your life. Learn to value people's differences, and how to respect the things that make people who they are.